problem is, is that we're not Black telling the kids to study these drugs earlier in life than they have ever had. Welcome to Minority Focus. I'm Jimmy Moore, your host. We always have um, interesting guests on the show, and today is no exception. I'd like to welcome Mr. Robert Hernandez to uh, Minority Focus. Mr. Hernandez is the director of uh, Habitat for Humanity. Did I use That's the right cool. title there? Director? Yes. A new director of Habitat <laughs> for Humanity. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank Glad you. Glad to have you. Know that you're not a, you're not a native of Paducah. Um, You've recently joined us here in this fantastic city. From where do you hail? Well, originally from San Benito, Texas, and uh, but moved uh, to Illinois, northern Illinois, as a matter of fact. So I'm accustomed to winter, a little more winter than get usually get around here. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, have migrated around with uh, my professional career and have landed here in Paducah now uh, for some other reasons, and then applied for the job as executive director for our affiliate here and uh, have been in that office since uh, late August. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about the winners here, they ain't nothing. <laughs> we don't have one this year. Well, apparently last year there was uh, a big surprise. Yeah, we had well, see, like this last time around, they said we got like three, four to five inches or whatever, mm -hmm. and it sprinkled the grass, yeah. you know, the streets never changed, <laughs> changed the textures at all. We get it pretty, pretty easy that way, I imagine, as compared to, uh, to being up around the lakes. Oh yes, we morning. measure snow by the feet there. Yes. <laughs> Habitat for Humanity. We, we had a, a recent um, uh, show about Habitat for Humanity, oh. and as we were talking before the show, I asked you about Harlan Brazier, yes. whether he was still affiliated or not. Yes, he's and, currently a member of the board. We have a volunteer board. Uh, they're an active board, so they don't just meet once a month. They actually do things uh, in association with their organization. And a lot of it has to do with fundraising, uh, and they're particularly involved with the selection of families. Uh, the there's a board member, or actually there's four board members who are on a selection committee, and they actually scrutinize uh, all the applications that we get throughout the year, uh, and there are very specific um, eligibility requirements and expectations for applicants, and they go through that on a regular basis, and then they will determine who who is and who is not eligible. How'd you make Paducah? How did Paducah come into the picture? For myself? Yes. Well, uh, it's, it's a lengthy story, but I'll, I'll try to be as brief as possible. I actually came to Paducah for another professional position, and that position uh, was, um, it didn't go so well. So uh, I, I stayed in Paducah. My wife has got a studio downtown. She's an artist. Okay. And so we wanted to stay in Paducah because we fell in love with the community. All right. Uh, we All think right. it's um, a very motivating, uh, energetic area to be in. Uh, everyone we meet has got a sense of excitement about the city and about the community. Uh, I've always used the um, flood wall as kind of an example of the kind of community we have here. Because when you look at it, and for certainly the artwork that's there, it displays sure. the history of the, of the whole region. But then I know from experience in other urban areas that it's also a target, a target for, you know, all kinds of criminal activity there, mm -hmm. uh, in particular graffiti. But there so. isn't an incident of graffiti against that wall. Right. I think that says a lot for the community. Exactly. That, uh, I hadn't thought about that. That's yeah. There's a great deal, I think, that says about how we uh, not only produce the, the murals and, and honor it, but also how we respect it as a community. For sure. And uh, so whatever we do to protect it and to keep it as safe as possible, I think, is an indication of the kind of community we have. Exactly. I know we had, uh, we had visitors, family visitors here uh, a couple of years ago. They stayed in the executive inn and were very much in wonderment that they were able to get out at 6 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and go for a walk exactly. in that downtown area. And the wife made mention of the fact that they never heard sirens. Exactly. They thought that was, was wonderful, exactly. nice, quiet, peaceful. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and I know we have our share of, of those kinds of events and incidents. But I think overall, uh, and, and I think a reflection in the work that the Habitat does, uh, because we have 56 homes now that we've built. Uh, in the community. Now, when you try to do that, uh, the percentage wise, in terms of like, well, what's going on in Louisville or Lexington, uh, it, it is uh, at least comparable uh, in terms of, you know, the population and the resources that are available. Right. Um, of the 56 homes, I mean, they're spread out across uh, primarily Paducah, uh, but they are in McCracken County, and we right. are a McCracken County Paducah affiliate. Right. Uh, we're also the first affiliate in Kentucky historically. Uh, we were. Um, uh, given our affiliate uh, license in 1981, 
So 2006 is going to be our 25th anniversary. And so I'm Great. preparing some um, celebrations, uh, which is one of the reasons I'm really happy to be on the air now, because I can say to sponsors and businesses who might be interested in providing some uh, funds or some other resources to help us celebrate right. 2006. Excellent. It would yeah. be excellent. Is this, is this a, a matter of... Um you build a house and the next day somebody wants to move into it? Well, or actually, no, it's, it's the reverse in a sense. Someone wants to move into it, so we build it for them. Oh, I see. Uh, people make, uh, families make application through the process, and the selection uh, is really uh, has three general parameters. The first is that they have to demonstrate the need. So they must be in some kind of um, discomfort or uncomfortable housing or poverty housing now. Uh, secondly, they must be able to pay an interest-free mortgage. Uh, one of the myths about Habitat is we give these houses away, right. and in fact we don't. These homeowners actually get a mortgage. They have to make a monthly mortgage payment. Uh, the difference is that they will get an interest-free mortgage. So those of us who have mortgage payments know what that difference makes. For sure. um, and then thirdly, they have to uh, make a, a partnership with the Habitat uh, as an organization and what we call sweat equity. 500 hours of real work, of real labor, uh, towards the, either construction of the house or the maintenance of the house or other work through the Habitat organization. Yeah. Uh, so that's a lot of work. It's like an old teaching that we used to talk about doing with kids. When you work for something, you appreciate it more. I think so. Because you put effort into it. I think so. And do it yourself. And I think it's also uh, a reflection of the um, <coughs> integrity of the organization. Again, not to just give away houses or because there's a demonstrable need there, exactly. but to responsible families who are going to uh, maintain uh, the home to the standards, especially now in Paducah where the standards are getting higher. Are there many requests? Like you said, people have to, people have, to have a need first. Yes. You build a home for them. Yes. Are there many people coming to you with that need, those needs? Oh yes, we have a number, a, a long list of applicants now. And the selection committee goes through these applicants and then creates some kind of priority list. Um, and then we seek out the resources to build the homes. Uh, there are years when two or three homes are built and other years when four or five homes are built and then they're like this year in 2005 where we actually didn't build a home. Mm -hmm. uh, we did renovate two homes and we have two families that have moved into the, the renovated homes and we have one home on Adams Street that is being built through uh, collaboration of some of the local churches and mm -hmm. we call that the Apostle Build. Okay. And we're really happy about that one. With, uh, with, um, is, is renovating something that precludes building like a new home? Which has preference? Which, which do you more Well, it depends on build? opportunity. Uh, the renovation might come about if a family has moved out or wants to sell the home that they've now come to own. And so consequently, we now have a home that's pretty much in pretty good shape. Right. Just needs to be, you know, tidied up a bit. Right. Uh, sometimes weather, sometimes just normal wear and tear. Is, um, I don't know how many, I don't remember numbers or anything we had the show with um, Brazier some time mm -hmm. ago. But as far as, as uh, the participation, the staffing, um, the people that you have working with you, oh, is well. that number a pretty good number? Do you, do no. you have sufficient? No, we do not. Uh, as a matter of fact, we are a um, volunteer organization. I'm the only paid employee as the executive director. Right. Um, so we are in need of uh, a number of volunteers, especially when it comes to construction. And it's not just the people who are hammering in the nails. We need people to uh, provide uh, food and beverage. We need people to provide transportation sometimes. We also need the expertise of people with real carpentry, uh, architectural, uh, that kind of expertise and skills. Right. Like say, for example, um, um, some of the more advanced students at the vocational schools, mm -hmm. they, they're, they're um, readily accepted their skills. They have, they have some skills. They may not be oh. graduates yet, but... Well, their instructors certainly do. Right. And so, exactly. uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the, the school here provides us with support and resources with the carpentry classes. They come in and actually do all the woodwork in, on the interior. Right. Um, I think uh, Brian and John uh, are the ones that uh, hold the classes. Mm -hmm. Brian Patterson. Right. And um, he's also on the board. Uh, but they, uh, they provide a lot of the hours that go into uh, making the home livable on the inside. Excellent. What have you got there? Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is a picture that, that we have. It's, it's a historical picture. And I think it's the picture that we want people to see in terms of like the house is being completed and what they're providing now is some landscaping. 
And so as part of what we do is that when we have the house ready to be moved into, we provide some landscape and then we have a dedication. And the de dedications are just wonderful because obviously the people are very enthusiastic and very happy. And I think it's one of those things where you really feel like uh, you've uh, brought a dream to some kind of, uh, um, you know, fruition for some people. Right. You've made a dream come true. And yet I think it's more than that. I think that uh, having lived in poverty myself, I understand that a lot of times that when you are in a state of poverty, you do lose all hope. And you do lose all sense of like I identity with the rest of society. And you feel so isolated. So I think, yes, we do make dreams come true. But I think more so, I think we answer prayers. I really do. Uh, because people do you know, pray for assistance. They pray for guidance. They pray for protection, et cetera. And they come to us with a sense of like a real need for a home. Because yes, we build the structure and yes, we, we put the siding on, the roof on, everything. But this is a family that needs a home. Yes. So it's, uh, it's rather okay. amazing. I'm written, man. Right? So, you know, <laughs> <with the brother. laughs> well, as a matter of fact, um, uh, a new funding source from the city of Paducah has come forth. And uh, Section 8 Department has, co has come into so, a new grant. And they can actually help some of our homeowners even further. So if they're having real difficulty meeting the requirements of making the uh, monthly mortgage payment, the Section 8 funding will help them with that. Right. Now, they do have to meet certain criteria with that. But once they do, it's, it's really tremendous what they can do for right. them. In everything, you got people who are going to try and scam you. That's going to happen. Unfortunately, yes. Um, how do you deal with that? Do you, are you able to? Well, initially, uh, I get a lot of the phone calls and so um, during the business day. And so I will ask a lot of questions about their situation. And you're right. I mean, sometimes we get some really fairly melodramatic sob stories mm -hmm. about what the world has done to uh, them and their families. Um, and I think we just have to ask questions and really trust that the information we get will be verifiable through some kind of documentation. Because we do ask about uh, information about their income, about members of their family. We do background checks. Uh, so we really make an effort to bring the most responsible and needy families to the homes. Right. How, how um, I'm curious, uh, much, of, much of what you do is dependent upon somebody somewhere else, in a lot, as is true of a lot of organizations, who oversees or makes the final decisions and et cetera. How involved are those people? Well, are you su suggesting the international office? Yes. Uh, well, actually, each affiliate is independent of the International uh, Habitat for Humanity Office. Uh, so even though they act as a corporate sponsoring agent and monitoring uh, facility, uh, the, as an example, the Paducah McCracken affiliate really is an independent affiliate. And we can really do, go about and do business. Now, there are certain record keeping things and accounting things that we have to uh, report. Uh, but pretty much, it's, it's uh, an independent site. In, in essence, the decisions that you make here, as far as a home being built, mm -hmm. who gets in that home, you make, nobody, nobody says, that is correct. No, well, hey, look here, man, like I was saying earlier, you don't, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, keep in mind, this is the tremendous responsibility for the board of directors. Right. And, and uh, the time that I've had with them, I know that they take that very seriously. Are they all Paducians? Yes, they are. I think that's part of their requirements. Right. Um, but we have architects, lawyers, businessmen, educators, um, and then uh, people who are homeowner, um, just people who live at home and, and take care of the home uh, are on the board. Um, so, but they're all invested. I mean, I haven't come across one that, you know, just shows up for the meetings and doesn't do something else. Matter of fact, they volunteered to help me with a number of the operational issues that I have. These are all, these are all uh, professional people who volunteer there. That is correct. Their professionalism. I would have to pay an attorney, but... He but, but he volunteers to, or, well, she, or she volunteers to. In some cases, I mean, right. we do have some legal services that we do pay for, right. but a lot of the services are uh, pro bono, yeah. Right. Now, um, I, I did want to mention some of the things that we need, if that's okay. Please. Okay, obviously we always need uh, in-kind donations of different kinds, but certainly, you know, funding uh, to build these homes. Uh, we also need sponsors, uh, and that can be, usually it's corporate sponsors. Uh, so a major corporation may want to sponsor a home, uh, the construction of a home, or part of a construction of a home. And they can call me um, if they want more information. I'll give that number in a little bit. Okay. I need a construction manager. This is someone who really takes charge of all the total construction effort. 
someone who actually manages each aspect of the construction process and the schedule. They're the liaison that I use to be sure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed yeah. as the construction you know, evolves. Uh, and that's important. And that's a paid position paid by stipend in accordance with each of the projects. So if we have four projects, they would have four avenues to be paid for. Uh, I need a pickup truck. Uh, I just let go of the last one because it was in really bad repair. So it was actually more expensive to keep than, than uh, to sell. I also need sell your service. As you know, um, well, as you, maybe you don't know, but I'm out of the office a lot, going from one site to the next, visiting with people, coming on this show and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm in need of sell your service. Um, we need website assistance. The website that's currently on there, I apologize if you visited that because it is in poor shape. It is out of date and not constructed well. So I need some help, uh, someone to help us construct a more appropriate and more attractive uh, website so that people can come on board with that. Okay. And I'd like to utilize that for funding, uh, for fundraising, uh, by having internet auctions and a sale of items, invite people to come on board as sponsors. Right. <clears throat> and it's, it's a way to utilize people who, you know, surf the web and, exactly. and want to find out about their local affiliate. I do need clerical assistance at the, at the office. As I'm the only employee, I, also, I do everything else. I have to keep the records, answer the phone, uh, take the checks, process the checks, uh, take out the garbage, mop the floors, <laughs> so the whole works. Uh, so I really need uh, uh, some assistance in that. So if there's anyone that's interested in just providing, you know, even a few hours a week would be very helpful. All right, let's get that number. Pardon me? Let's get that number out there. Now. Well, uh, let's see now. The, the actual phone number is 443-6150. 443-6150. Our fax number, in case anyone wants to fax us information on their interest, is 443-2759. And we're located at 709 South 22nd Street in apartment 9. Our post office box is 1693. And the zip on that would be 42002. Um, now, I would really encourage anyone interested in uh, <coughs> becoming a homeowner to contact us right. because uh, I, I really am interested in developing this list of people who uh, are in need of this kind of housing. So I can go to the community leaders and say, look, I've got 30 people here that, that are eligible and, and valid candidates for homes, and we need to start building these homes. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I need the resources. Our church is involved in this. Oh, are, are there... yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, quite involved. There's a long history of uh, church involvement with the Habitat for Humanity. And locally, under current conditions, there is what we call an apostle build, and that's on Adams Street. Mm -hmm. And there are 10 local churches that are involved in, uh, in uh, assisting uh, with different resources uh, mm -hmm. to build this. Right. So it's fantastic. Let's say uh, I call you today, I have no, uh, I have no skills with my hands. <laughs> You know, I mean, I can pound a nail and stuff like that. I saw a board. Would you be able to utilize me in any kind of way? We would find a way. We would find a way to utilize you if you're interested in helping out. Okay. Um, there are so many ways to be of assistance. Um, if you can, you know, like if you can carry a pail of nails, you know, if you can hold a ladder, uh, if you can drive somebody to and from different places, okay. uh, if you can take a picture, you know, or if you can uh, hand out a sandwich. Right. You know, so there are so many different ways to help. Uh, I've got uh, a number of things uh, in terms of donations that are waiting to be picked up. And that I just need labor. I need someone with a truck that's willing to meet me at such and such a place mm -hmm. and to help me pick up some lumber or some uh, shingles or whatever's being donated. Right. Um, those kinds of donations are important too uh, for two reasons. One is it does reduce the cost then of the construction of the, of the homes. Secondly, I'm going to be opening up the store again that's located on 16th Street next to Fleming Furniture. Right. It's actually part of their building that they donate. And um, I wanted to open it up. It, it was previously it was a thrift store, kind of like uh, some of the other thrift stores in the area. Uh, but I don't think it, uh, that's what our homeowners need. It's another thrift store to go to. I think what they need is a store where they can find things that they need for their homes right. uh, at a much reduced price. And so if these things are donated to me and I sell them at a certain price, then that's total profit for the organization. Exactly. You mentioned you know, the, 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 the things that you have to do. From the onset, uh, conception of building a, a house or home for someone, 
to, uh, like you mentioned, someone taking pictures for mm -hmm. recording what's been done and all of that. You, you, you physically have to do all of that, or the bulk of that yourself? Right well, now. currently, I, I am the only person. I do have uh, a small number of volunteers that are assisting me with some special projects. Uh, but as far as the office and the operations go, yes, I'm primarily responsible and right now the only one responsible for all that. Any secretarial type people out there? <laughs> You got the magic number, 444-6150, yeah. 444-6150. Call them up if you got any kind of, any kind of uh, way that you can help in this. I know a lot of people are, are happily in homes. Yes. That's a nice, that's a nice feeling. Well, isn't it though? And I think that's uh, one of the uh, benefits of all this is that we recently um, uh, finally uh, concluded uh, home placement just before Thanksgiving with uh, a family and we were working so hard in September and I had just come on board in late August so this um, information comes to me that you know this home has been on hold and stuff I said well let's get to work and so now I'm learning you know on the run all the different right. procedures and steps that I have to take and uh, all the different people I have to call and of course you run into the usual kinds of roadblocks and barriers and delays and that kind of thing which are not unusual just that now I'm kind of on a timeline here so I keep talking with the homeowner and I keep encouraging her and she keeps calling me and we go along and it's late October it's early November and I'm going like I think we can make it and it was uh, the day before Thanksgiving exactly. we were meeting in the lawyer's office signing off on the deed uh -huh. and, uh, and she was so happy and that look on her face <laughs> when she now becomes a homeowner Exactly. and has done her sweat equity hours okay. and has invested in the home it's just uh, it's priceless I, I mean you can it, it's just one of those things where you know uh, the whole mission of the Habitat for Humanity as an international organization and then locally mm -hmm. it just comes right into focus uh, with this woman and her family mm -hmm. and the goal was for them to have their Thanksgiving dinner as a family in that home and by golly we made it. it is. So, <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of you know the bureaucracy that you know that you that you run into the unnecessary red tape and all of that that sort of thing um, you experiencing you know that well of course I mean uh, anytime you deal with banks and lawyers and uh, property issues uh, the city of Paducah the county I mean inspections etc I mean yes I mean uh, and there are two sides to that one is it protects uh, the integrity of the process right. Uh, but secondly, it does create those timelines that uh, you wish you could just snap your fingers and make it happen. Sure. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, I'm learning as we go along. I'm developing relationships with the inspectors and some of the other officials and some of the business people. And I know that that's part of the road I have to travel here. Exactly. I have to get out there and, you know, kiss babies and shake hands. <laughs> and that's okay. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to put in the time. Um, I knew that when I took this position that it is uh, time-consuming that it's challenging because of what you mentioned in terms of the bureaucracy. Uh, but, boy, I tell you, that moment when that woman signed that deed and knew she was a homeowner, <laughs> I said, that's, that's what you do. I mean, it's that's what it's for. Life. Yeah, and uh, it, it's hard to express that in words. It's one of those things you wish you could video every time, and maybe I will from now on, yeah, for sure. and have that available to show. Uh, there's another homeowner that I met and I wish I had that with me. Uh, she produced a, a, a little uh, book-like thing that she files through, and then mm -hmm. she calls it the house that Habitat built, kind of like right. the house that Jack built. Right. And every step right. of the way, you know, the, the foundation, the frame, uh, putting up the walls, uh, laying the carpet, and on and on. And she used it during the 2000 uh, millennium build that uh, this affiliate did. And she went out on the road, so to speak, to each of the uh, schools and the daycare centers and kind of showed the kids what Habitat does. Right. It's kind of neat. Right. I imagine some of the kids, I don't know about it so much so in the wintertime, but in the spring and summer months, that a lot of kids, younger people, would like to get involved with something like yes, this. Yes, as a matter of fact, yeah, they do. As a matter of fact, I've gotten some calls uh, from school uh, kids that uh, either have uh, found kind of in their heart a need to help out and want to know how or have been guided to that by some adult or some organization. Uh, I'm ho actually, I'm hoping to utilize some of that energy and effort in a project I call Adopt a Lot. Uh, we have several empty lots in the city right. and they have to be maintained. 
Um, and I'm hoping that uh, some of these youth groups will come forward, either church groups or scout groups or 4-H sure. groups, and uh, can come through and say, yes, we'll adopt a lot and we'll take care of it for you. Right. When I, when I mentioned vocational schools earlier, I, I was thinking, of course, primarily about WKCTC. But uh, Paducah Tillman also has a vocational oh, okay. uh, um, area uh, out there where a number of, of uh, skills are taught. I think they have carpentry going on. I don't know if brick masonry is part of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I seem like I remember a building that they built right out there oh, in front of the vocational school. Oh, my. Uh, so I okay. think maybe they disassembled it later. But like for a class project or whatever. Sure. So they've got some skills going on even in high school. You know, in addition to uh, the great things some of these students out here are capable of. It's amazing uh, what they can do and how they do it, and also that they're willing to. And I know sure. they're getting great experience from it, but they could be doing it somewhere else. For so sure. I know that. For sure. uh, I think I'm very encouraged about the volunteerism in the area. And I'm realistic, too, that uh, the 2005 uh, disasters that we've had, uh, you know, early in the year and then later in the year, have created this uh, sense of like obligation to help those in those areas. And it's taken away from uh, local donations and local fundraising. Right. Uh, so 2006 is going to be a push to get this back in order here locally. For sure. Well, here's hoping that um, the support that you need, the people that you need, now, now that I have an understanding that I don't necessarily have to be able to fool one of them Mito box things where you, <laughs> I, I used to sell all Whatever of this they are, stuff, yeah. you know, I used to work at Sears years ago, I, I sold see. this stuff, I had no idea what it was used for, yeah. you know, uh, I built, um, so you're a good salesman, well, no, <laughs> I hate it, but I built my mom some bookends, you know, oh, the thing see. on the bottom there, and that was the only thing I was ever able to accomplish, like okay. I said, I don't do it here, but I can carry a bucket of nails, well, there you go, you know, uh, and I can, I can dig in the yard, and use a rake, yeah, you know, I got all, yeah. all those skills That's going right. for me. Yeah. So maybe some other people out there will think about, about this when you have some time um, to offer and uh, help Mr. Robert Hernandez out to accomplish some of these fantastic things that Habitat for Humanity does for so many of our citizens. Um, it is a wonderful feeling to be in your own home. Been there, done that. No it, feeling like it. Well, the need is very real. Uh, it is extensive. The poverty rates here in this area are real. Um, and... Um, substantial. So uh, I know that we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, we'll be looking for the resources, so you'll probably be hearing my name or hearing my voice again and again. I have uh, you on the show again. So just give it a number one more time. One it more is 443-6150. 443-6150. Thank, Thank you very much. very much for coming. We need to have you back. Okay. You know, and maybe follow you with you sometimes on some of these projects that you okay. have, some of the houses that you're happy to do that. Thank you very much for okay. coming. Uh, d don't forget about this. Don't, don't, don't push this under the table or whatever. This is it's very important, and um, we can all join in to, uh, to make some people um, have experiences that they otherwise might never. Hope you'll help us out. Notice I said us. That's right. For a minute now. For Minority Focus, I'm Jimmy Moore.